Would you believe me if I said that the red region on this map has the same population as all of the blue regions on this map? That would mean that the red region would have the same population as Perth, Australia, Sydney, Australia, Auckland, New Zealand, Salt Lake City, Utah, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Vancouver, Canada, and literally every other major city pinpointed on this map along with the land of all these massive countries? Well, it's true. The red region takes up just 0.029% of the Earth's total land, but has a whopping 5% of the world's total population. It is insane to think that if you asked 100 random people throughout the world where they are from, roughly 5% would tell you they are from the city in the red region. So, you're probably wondering what is the city in the red region that takes up 5% of the world's total population? This is the most densely populated region in the entire world and it is known as Bangladesh. Many people know China and India as having massive populations, but Bangladesh has the most densely populated city in any country around the globe. At 164 million, how overcrowded is this city really? Bangladesh's population is likely to grow by 10 million people in the next five years. A recent study found that plastic waste in Dhaka has tripled in the last two decades. Tens of thousands of migrants are fleeing Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka. They're taking a bath in a poisonous soup of decades of untreated wastewater. And urban planners fear the country could face acute crowding problems unless the government looks ahead. Now, when I think of super overcrowded cities, I think of places like New York City and even Los Angeles. The subway can be pretty gross, traffic is just non-stop, and the spread of diseases is a major concern when people live in such close quarters. The city of Dhaka in Bangladesh blows New York City out of the water when it comes to the population density and the extreme issues that living in such close proximity to others bring. In fact, New York City, or any other American city for that matter, doesn't even rank in the top 10 for the most densely urban populated areas of the world. New York has 8.419 million residents living in its 302 square miles area. Downtown Dhaka, Bangladesh has a population of 22,478,116 people, but concentrated in just 134 square miles. So, for example, this would be like multiplying the population of New York City by three, but condensing it into just a third of the size of New York City. When you have such a large population, all living so extremely close to each other, the outcome is never too positive. So, you're probably wondering now, from the title of this video, how Bangladesh has become so insanely overcrowded and why this is a problem that is only getting worse. To start, Bangladesh is actually a very new country. Following World War II, Pakistan used to be split up between West Pakistan and East Pakistan, which is now present-day Bangladesh. Eastern Pakistan was previously known as Bengal. These two regions were extremely different where all they had in common was their faith of Islam. Leaders in West Pakistan would use the abundant natural resources of Eastern Pakistan where all the rivers of the Himalayas would flow through Eastern Pakistan and then into the Indian Ocean. Leaders in Western Pakistan would import these natural resources and then sell the products and goods to Eastern Pakistan for 10 times the amount that they would be sold to the Western Pakistani people. Western Pakistan believed the people in Eastern Pakistan to be culturally inferior and demanded that Urdu would be the official language even though only 3% of the former Bengali region spoke it as opposed to 56% speaking Bengali in this region. As Western Pakistan kept bullying Eastern Pakistan around, resistance movements became very popular across Eastern Pakistan seeking independence. As you could probably expect, Western Pakistan didn't like this and enabled a special mission called Operation Searchlight to squash Bengali nationalism for good. Violence engulfed the entire country as the people fought back against Western Pakistan and Operation Searchlight, and with that, the Bangladesh Liberation War started in 1971. At the very beginning of the war, India sided with the Bengali people and just two weeks later, Pakistan surrendered. With the surrender, East Pakistan became Bangladesh, a free and sovereign country. Following the Liberation War, Bangladesh had many different prime ministers as the first two were assassinated and the next two resigned because of what an awful job they were doing. Bangladesh was suffering from famine and hyperinflation. 
Finally, in 2009, Sheikh Hasina became Prime Minister and Bangladesh began rebuilding. Well, sort of. In the 21st century, Bangladesh's economy and population has certainly been growing. Bangladesh's growth stems from its number one export, which is garments, accounting for 84% of its total exports. Because Bangladesh lacks a diverse economy, along with barriers preventing trade such as tariff prices much higher than the rest of Asia, Bangladesh scores very low on the World Bank's Logistic Performance Indicator. Perhaps one of the biggest concerns of Bangladesh's economy is due to its rampant corruption. Regular citizens routinely pay bribes for basic services from the government, which is one of the only ways the government officials are able to make a living. Government officials are pretty much the only ones in Bangladesh that can afford a comfortable lifestyle, as an insane 76.5% of residents in 2010 live on less than 2 US dollars a day. This makes Bangladesh one of the poorest countries in the world. The overpopulation of Bangladesh and its capital of Dhaka is composed mainly of very young individuals. 34% of Bangladesh's population is under 15 years old and only 5% is over the age of 65. To compare this to the United States, the US has 18% of its population under 15 years old and 17% over 65. When you have a huge portion of your population too young and not yet skilled enough to work, this contributes to the struggling economy. Not only is the economy of Bangladesh facing immense failure, but Dhaka and Bangladesh as a whole is often considered the most polluted country in the entire world. In fact, air pollution is so bad in some areas of Bangladesh that the average life expectancy is shortened by an average 8.1 years for just this reason alone. Bangladesh used to pride itself in its lush farms with all the rivers flowing through the country, but since the emergence of its brick, metal, and coal factories, the soil is almost unusable. An estimated 13 to 22 percent of all deaths in Bangladesh are linked to the health effects of its air pollution. Children and women are at the highest risk for indoor air pollution, which grew substantially during the COVID-19 pandemic when schools were forced to close. The rivers have become so polluted that even water purifiers are useless, forcing residents of Bangladesh to drink contaminated water. Men still bathe in the Buriganga River, which is right outside of Dhaka, considering running water is extremely hard to find and is typically reserved for only the rich. Not only does Bangladesh's factories contribute to a massive amount of pollution, but also pollution is traveled in from nearby cities in India and Nepal. India and Nepal are two of the top five most polluted countries in the world, and their air pollution doesn't just stay within the country's borders. Coal mine particles, which drift in from India, are 100 times more polluted and dangerous to the health and environment of Bangladesh. It contributes to as much as 40% of the total air pollution that you would find in Bangladesh. Living in the most crowded city in the world also contributes to very high levels of transmissible diseases. COVID was also a major problem in cities like Dhaka, especially when the country doesn't have the money to fund COVID response measures and access to good hospitals or doctors. While the low-class individuals are suffering living in the poverty-ridden slums, the middle and upper class spend most of their time just stuck in traffic. Residents of Dhaka will tell you that the rest of the world doesn't understand traffic until they come to Dhaka. Traffic will often get so jammed up that pedestrians attempting to cross the street will just climb over cars to get to the other side of the road. If you're rich, you will experience traffic from the backseat of your car where the sounds of the horns is muffled by the glass. While if you're in the middle or lower classes, you're in a rickshaw breathing in the unavoidable exhaust. Dhaka's infrastructure doesn't match its population. Just 7% of the city is covered in roads, compared to 25% of Paris and Vienna, and 40% of Washington DC and Chicago. Additionally, there are 650 intersections in Dhaka with only 60 traffic lights, where many of them don't even work. 
To make matters even worse, only 50% of bus drivers and automobile owners in Dhaka have their license. With all these horrible effects that overpopulation in Bangladesh has caused, the birth rate in Bangladesh has decreased to two children per woman. This is still very much higher than the United States and other European countries that are closer to 1.4 to 1.7 children per woman. Significant changes will need to be made to Bangladesh's government if they want to escape poverty and become a more prosperous, clean country. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely click on this video to learn about what living in the most unemployed town in the United States is like.